but I do horribly at it, Maddie. I'm just horrible at games, but I love playing them. Money. Let's see. Money, 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 money. Hey, that's actually very good. Money makes the world go round, and there's lots of it. In 2013, there were 10 trillion US dollars floating around the planet, and that's the US alone. Include all the other currencies in the world, and it jumps to hundreds of trillions. But what is money, really? When you ask, most people define money by how they use it, and that is to get things. Well, Please. yeah. You can use money for many things besides just getting things. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're Mr. Moneybags right there, then yes, you can burn $100 bills. I prefer that he get, if he if he's going to burn it, just give it to me, please. Please try, Definition. please. So the question still remains. What is money? To answer the question, let's imagine a simple economy where everybody works at something different. At the end of the day, we have the fruits of our labor, but we can't live by bread or fish alone. Is so that at the auto part? OK, I'll, I'll take a look at that later, Bryce. This is economic exchange. And it's critical for quality of life, even survival. But be careful here. It looks like products are being exchanged, but what's really being exchanged is labor time. Yes. If an artisan works eight hours to make bowls, a fisher has to give back eight hours of labor to make it fair. I mean, yeah, if to make it fair. If a fisher catches 10 fish in eight hours, he gives the artisan 10 fish. But it's not really the fish that's, that's even. being exchanged. It's, it's labor. It's labor. If yep. the baker was the one who was buying, the artisan would get eight hours worth of bread instead of fish. Eight hours of the artisan's labor equals eight hours of the fisher's time. Or that's the that's time. fair. That's 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 in a non-market economy. Labor in the form of products is called barter, and it's great, yep. but very limiting. For it to work, each participant in the exchange has to want what the other offers. Yep. Otherwise, the market grinds to a stop. Absolutely. Enter money. Money was invented to make it easier to exchange labor time by putting labor into abstract form. Yeah, money that's that's great true. Because money makes exchange simple and easy. With money, you can trade with anybody, anywhere, anytime, and that's important. Because with money, we have transformed our small world of local exchange into a giant world of global exchange. And the big thing with that is with money, you since you aren't exchanging goods, you're exchanging a currency. You are um, making sure that you're only getting what you want. And the advantage of the person getting money is that with the money that they're getting from you, they can get what they want, you know? With money, we can have bigger, better, and more of everything. Yes. Without money, the world we live in today would simply not be possible. But as great as money is there is one major problem with it and that's how easy it is to accumulate remember a product equals somebody's labor time yep if we buy handicrafts from a street vendor and put these in our homes we are accumulating labor in the form of handicrafts which is fine because there are limits on how much we can accumulate in this fashion however with money there are no limits when money is the medium, you can accumulate trillions of labor hours with no trouble at all. And that's Absolutely. Problem, because when people start to accumulate, they find it's never enough. The reason why is because money is power. Like, um, Mr. Elon Musk, dumbass over there. He has more money than he could ever do within his lifetime. And he thinks himself some big dude. Big Mr. Moneybags there. You can buy products with money. He has people licking his balls. I mean, sorry. He has people. He has people who enjoy him, who really want to follow what he does, because in our economy, being being more more objective here. In our economy, there are people out there who see someone who has accumulated a ton of wealth and they see them as somebody who they should emulate. I see it as somebody who they should strive to be. The issue with people like Elon Musk is that their wealth had to start with his, his parents. His parents ran an emerald mine in South Africa. So he came from money. He came from money from generational wealth is what it's called. He came from generational wealth and that helped him accumulate more because he already had a big head start compared to everyone else. Compared to you or me who start at the bottom, he was already rich when he started and then he just got more and more and more he just he was able to convince enough people for to buy his product 
and by the products he made, including the U.S. government, etc., that he kept accumulating more wealth. But with money, you can also buy other people's labor. In fact, with money, yeah, evil, evil, Scotty, though, evil. Anything you want, and that makes you a very powerful person. And power is the most addictive drug on the planet. It really the is. Talent, it's never enough. The more you have, the more you want. And that's a problem. Because while you can easily overdose on heroin or whatever, you can't ever OD on money. And while you might think addiction to money is not a bad thing, oh, <laughs> my friend, it is. It is a problem for the addicts and their families because the addiction is all-consuming. It's also a problem for the entire world because the addict will do anything to feed their need. They will lower wages of workers, replace jobs with... And that is the big issue that happens. Um, rich, wealthy folks want more wealth. They're going to continue to go for more wealth. That's, that's, that's what they do. That's the way the thing goes. They'll go for more wealth. And to do that, they're going to take advantage of the poor folk, like myself and others. I'll take a look at it in a little bit. Taxes, yes. Um, Maddie, taxes were invented to kind of put some back into social, um, into the social system, into, because, you know, governments are there to um, help organize everything. And yes, taxes were there to kind of get some of that wealth back. But here's what ends up happening. The wealthy can pay off the politicians who make the laws that, get, that tax them. So... I, me as a worker, I have an effective tax rate of like 35% or whatever, because I don't have any loopholes that I can work for. Now, a person that's extremely wealthy, they can find a ton of loopholes where maybe originally they would have to get 35 to 40 or 50%, but with the loopholes, they'll be effectively at a five or 10% tax rate. So that is, that is the issue that happens there. Uh, maybe, I don't know. People and even use child labor if they can get away with it. And it doesn't stop when we have enough. If we don't want to buy, they will manipulate us into wanting more. They won't care if their practices and products make us sick, and they won't think twice about the environmental cost because the addiction overrides it all. And yep. why do you think it would all stop when there was no more money left? It doesn't. In order to keep the system going, they lend us money just so they can take it away. But that just makes it worse, because instead of ending up with nothing, we end up with less than nothing. We end up with debt. And the debt accumulates until eventually it's so bad that nobody is willing to lend at all. And when that happens, the world as we know it ends. With no money, there's no exchange. With no exchange, the economy collapses. With no economy, it all goes to pieces. It's happened before, and it will happen again. Yep. It's really just a matter of time. Even as we speak, the 62 richest people on the planet have more money than 3 billion people combined. And it's getting worse. That is insane. Fast. It simply can't go on for much longer. Now, I know the picture I've painted isn't pretty, but there are those who see it coming. It's clear from the growing violence of world events and the growing chaos of global weather that we're reaching the final stage. If we want to save the planet, we need to act now. The question is, what do we do? Well, there are a few things we can do. First, we must educate. If we're going to solve global problems, everybody needs to know the truth. Yep. Of course, some people aren't going to like this. Some might prefer us to remain confused and distracted. The rich and powerful won't like it, of course. We must all take apart and educate. The second thing we can consider is a global debt jubilee. A debt jubilee is when debt is simply written off the books. I know it sounds outrageous, but more and more people are discussing the possibility. And besides, there's no way our 300 trillion global debt can ever be paid off. Nope, Third, never. Since accumulation is the root of the problem, we need to end accumulation or manage it in some sensible way. How that's definitely done, manage it. The lizard people. I knew they were real. I knew they were real. The spiritual revolution, not the kind where we follow the leader, but the kind where we awaken to reality and empower to change. You know what I'm talking about? The kind where we throw off greed and hatred and unite as one for change. You know what I mean? The kind where peace guides the planet and love steers the stars. It's either that or... Um... <laughs> very nice. Very nice video. Um... And also... Pretty... Uh... Optimistic? Which is not a bad thing. I mean, optimism is never a bad thing. But, yeah, it's pretty darn optimistic when you think about it. Because I'm not that optimistic about humanity. I think, like, I'm just gonna... Li that's what Why do you think I don't have children? There's a reason I don't have children. I don't trust the global elite. I don't trust that humanity will fix itself. I trust that before I pass away, things are going to get really bad. And I don't want my children to be in that world. That's, that's the thing. 
it may not be in my lifetime that the world is going to get ruined, but the world's going to get ruined eventually. I'm very pessimistic about that, which is why I haven't had kids. That's the main reason I haven't had children.